In this section, we're going to talk about how to create an app in Scala. The previous section, we created a script, which was interpreted. Now we're going to be creating and compiling source code, which then becomes JVM bytecode, which then we can use to run or make it a part of a library. Now for this section, we're going to need an editor. And what I'm going to do here in the terminal is I'm going to start off by creating a file called myapp.scala. Now I'm going to bring this up inside of an editor. Alt tab. Inside the editor, let me bring up creating app Scala, which is the folder where I'm placing this Scala file. I'm going to bring up myapp.scala. So inside of this file, I'm going to start off with a very basic class. I'm going to call this class employee. There's no need for public. Everything is public by default. And I'm going to start with an open paren, and I'm going to start adding the properties. First property I'm going to add is first name, followed by a colon, then the type. If you're coming in from Java, this is reverse of what you expect. In Java, you expect to do a type first and the name of the property or variable name. Inside of Scala, we'll do the property name first, colon, then the type. Now I'm going to add last name followed by the type. At the very basic level, this is not all we need, but it's sufficient. So I'm going to save this file. Now if you're coming in from Java, you're going to notice something a little bit alarming. The class name is called employee, but the file name is called myapp.scala. The Scala compiler is going to allow this. Scala compiler is going to do a lot of things for you that you don't have to particularly think about all that much. In fact, you could even create multiple classes within the same file. Let me show you an example. Let's say I want to create a class called department, and a department has a property called name with the type string. In fact, I could also make it a part of this employee class. So now this employee has three properties, first name, last name, and department. I have two classes within one file. Pretty amazing. I'm going to go ahead and save the file. And now I'm going to switch over back to the terminal. So back at the terminal, I have one file. Let's take a look. There it is, myapp.scala. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to compile this file, and I'm going to do so with Scala C, which stands for Scala Compiler. And I'm going to specify the Scala file that I wish to compile. Now that I'm done, let's take a look at what is inside my folder. Now I created two classes inside of myapp.scala. And when I compile it, what it's going to do is it's going to create two Java class files. Now, if I want to take a look at the class files, I can use Java P. And Java P will allow me to introspect these class files to see what's contained in it. I'm going to use Java P space dash P. Dash P allows me to view a lot of private information within this particular class file. And I'm going to specify employee. And when I do so, I could take a look at the internals of the employee class that I created. This is Java. And this says that I have a class called employee, and I have a constructor called employee with three arguments. First one's a string, which represents the first name. Second one's the last name, which is a string. And then finally, a department. Again, this is all JVM bytecode. Now let's say I wanted to get organized. What I'd like to do is I'd like to remove the class files from here. They could always be regenerated using the compiler. And here's my myapp.scala. What I'd like to do, let's say I want to create a source folder and I want to create a classes folder where all the compiled classes will be placed. Let me do a tree to show you what that looks like. Now tree is freely available for Mac OS X and Linux. For Windows, there's also a tree. The only thing that you would have to do is make sure that you specify that you want to see files as well. But this is available to all Windows users. So what I'd like to do is move my app.scala into the source folder. I'll go ahead and do that right now and do a tree to see where we're at. So I have my app.scala inside of the source folder and I have a classes folder to compile to. Now, if I want to compile my app.scala, I can use the Scala compiler and I'm going to use a switch called D, which will allow me to specify where the class files will be sent to. I'm going to specify that this should go into the folder called classes. And now I'm going to state that for the source files, I want you to look inside of the source folder and look at any Scala file within it. Now let's take a look at the tree. All the class files are inside of the class folder and the source files still stay within the source folder. And that's using the Scala compiler. Now I have to warn you 
this myapp.scala is for compiler use only. If you're going to compile it, you cannot run it as a script. Let me show you an example of that. I'm going to go back to my editor. This says right down here that the file is no longer available, which is true. So let me go ahead and uh, bring this up. This is now under the source directory under my app Scala. Make sure we're editing the right one. But let's say I want to treat this like a script. Again, warning, this will not work. Because I have two classes here, that's fine. I can compile that. But the print line right here is now going to be treated as a script. Now, I can run this as a script, but I cannot compile it. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to bring up the previous command that I had before. Again, my app is inside of the source folder and inside of the classes where everything is going to be compiled. If I'm going to compile a Scala file, which is modeled as a script, I will get this expected class or object definition. It doesn't know what to do with that print line. I can run it as a script, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. I just can't compile it. So you'll have to know the difference. And this sums up how to create an app inside of Scala. So you could either choose compilation or you could choose interpretation. But when you choose compilation, be sure you compile code that is not a script. To recap, source code can be compiled or can be interpreted. If you are going to compile, use Scala C. If you're merely going to interpret it as a script, then just run Scala on that file.